Cheers. Cheers. Some more hey. Danish dirty water. Gamfen Dansk or something? Gamfendansk. Gamble Dansk. Gamble Dansk. Gamble Dansk. All the way down there. Mm. <coughs> yeah. That's disgusting. I'm feeling it now. fantastic Korg yeah. Electri at some point later in the demo. Oh. But for now, let's talk about Reverend Guitars. Yes, on indeed. All About the Bass, the uh, world's one and only bass guitar show from Guildford. It's <laughs> <laughs> broadcast weekly. Is that kicking in? That's still, yes, it, it might is, be. Yeah. 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 He's lost the power of speech, apparently. <laughs> ah, hello and welcome to All About the Bass. I'm Nathan. And I'm the captain. Yeah. And today, indeed, we are talking about these uh, Reverend basses. Now this is new to me. I, I, I didn't know about Reverend guitars and basses, but uh... well, Reverend is um, kind of a cool concept. It's a um, little bit like, a uh, little bit kind of like the, the one of the other guitar brands that I'm more closely involved with, um, where Reverend have kind of come up with this idea of of trying to sort of cut out as many middlemen as they can between getting the the guitar from the factory to the end user. Mm -hmm. So. The idea with Reverend, it's an American company, uh, a guy called Ken uh, is the sort of brainchild behind it, the guy who designs, you know, all of the, the, the shapes and the pickups, and he's quite into, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's proprietary to, to Reverend, not just the designs, but, you know, pickups, electronic switching, stuff like well, that. Well, it's nice to see somebody doing something different. A little bit I'm different. Sure. Whole range of bass guitars, electric guitars, solid bodies, semi-acoustics, all that kind of stuff, all with a slightly more sort of retro vibe. So. Uh, the Reverend designs are then sent out to the Far East, one of the factories in Korea, in South Korea. So it's a high quality um, factory with a great reputation. They design the guitars. They then go back to uh, Ken's kind of uh, headquarters in the USA, mm. where each guitar gets a full professional setup from one of the guys at Reverend. They reckon they spend sort of between half an hour, an hour per guitar, making sure that the frets are all good, um, you know, the bodies are all good, you know, just good stuff and then it goes straight to the retailer from there so it kind of bypasses that typical middleman distribution thing mm -hmm. uh, which should, should save the uh, customer a little bit of money um, and I thought you know we're gonna do a, a, a feature on the guitars in one of the uh, Anderton's TV guitar shows soon soon you, and you I, do guitar shows apparently so yes I just I only thought um, you did a bass one I can't believe it and we'll probably do something with chappers as well but for this particular video we're, we're staying on the bases and we're staying on a couple of the bases that um, uh, that uh, Reverend makes so we've got the Macaulay Masali Macaulay it's got to be, it's well, be a know. hard C I would have thought hasn't it uh, so, that's so who, is, who is this Macaulay There's, I don't know we if it's a person know. or just oh. a word uh, and we've got uh, you can have that in a four string or a five string okay and then we've got another bass called the Dub King which is like a semi solid uh, so we'll talk about that a bit later so take us through um, whilst I hold up the four string so that people can see that it's basically all the same stuff on okay. the four string or the five string. Take us through it. Well, you've got the same controls on both bases. Uh, pretty straightforward. Volume, uh, tone, mm -hmm. 
and uh, a sweep, pickup sweep, so front to back and a center eye dent, so mm -hmm. you get them both on full whack. Um, what, are, what's, what are the pickups on there? They're kind of a bit funky looking, aren't they? They are a bit funky looking, looks like a split single on the front mm -hmm. and a proper humbucker on the back. So, uh, yeah. But all, what, Reverend's own design pickups? Yes, absolutely, he makes his own. There was a band actually called Reverend the Makers, wasn't there? Was there really? Yeah. Perhaps he was in that. But now Reverend is know. the maker. Good link. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, cool. What else we got? Okay, obviously it's maple neck on this one, uh, rosewood neck on that one. Yep. I'm not sure if that's a thing of like five string versus four string. If you, I'll put a link in the description below. You can check out all these bases. But so I don't know if the four string comes in maple and the five string in rosewood, or maybe that's a, the split between the two. But mm. anyway, you can find out with one click of your mouse. Um, what else? Got some cool hardware on here. We have. Uh, yeah, uh, we got like a cast bridge. Uh, which has got the great feature of you can have it sort of string through, mm -hmm. string through the body or just uh, string through the bridge itself. Yeah, we've got this, This I think they call it like a lockdown bridge, don't they? So that the, the yep. saddles can be sort of locked yes, in place the, to once prevent. Yes, once the height and the intonation is set, you can, there's a little uh, Allen yeah. bolt here, you can screw it down so it doesn't move. That's kind Stops of any unwanted movement, yep. yeah, cool. Yeah, that's nice, a nice little feature. Uh, we've got uh, lightweight hip shot tuners on the top. So proper good tuners, Hipshot's always a good brand for that yeah, kind of stuff. They, they look very nice. Uh, did I see it was uh, like a Carina body or something? You know, unusual, like lightweight. That's right, yeah. A white Limber, I think they call it. <laughs> white Limber? Yeah. Another name for a band. I hope that's right. Um, yeah, you've got uh, like a veneer, flame maple veneer on that. I, I gather that the whole range is available in a, you know, either solid colours like this or you can get some flame maple kind of veneers if you want it. Yeah, that's a nice Take us through some one. tones, man. Okie dokie, right. Uh, okay, we're starting off, uh, we'll go on the bridge. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as you imagine, a honky sort of sound. Mm -hmm. Front pickup, more your P bass. Let's have a look at what the tone does. We wind it all the way off. It's like a conventional tone on something mm -hmm. like a P bass. You know, mm -hmm. It's just you basically tote all the top end out of it. So pretty straightforward mm -hmm. on the control front. I like it. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, I've not seen that sort of... Um, at least visually I've not seen it. So I mean, it's kind of like a P bass sort of split pickup at the front, but done in one pickup rather than two separate ones. Yeah. Um, it's, it looks kind of, yeah, it looks cool, doesn't it? I'm, I'm, yeah, I do. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. I like the sort of the, the, the Reverend headstock shape as well. I think that's got a, a nifty sort of look to it. If you flip your base over, you can see actually it's a five piece neck, which um, a lot of manufacturers do that just to give more stability and you know, stop the neck moving. It's Tons got, of bolts. It's got a million screws holding the neck. Yeah, on. that's it. That is uh, an eight bolt neck. Yeah, you uh, could have same four wow. there and you'd still be fine. Yeah, that's crazy. Is that the same on the four? Uh, yeah, it is. So yeah, this neck is not moving anywhere. No. Um, uh. No, it's cool. It's very very cool. Tons of different colours, uh, which again I'll put a link in the description below so that you can go check them out. Do you want to give the four string a quick? Um, uh, for sure thing. Yeah. A quick ping. So we're expecting it to sound pretty much the same. It should sound uh, identical, really. You know, it's uh, perhaps a smidgen difference, just um, different fretboard. Okay, let's have a look at this. So everything up, pickups in the middle. It's so. I think whenever there's more than like a split second between going from one to the other, the, the to ears tell. kind of go back to sleep, don't they, and wake up again. I thought it sounded a little different, but um, yeah, very nice. I like it. I like. I like the, the thing I liked about Reverend when I saw them. Other than the, I think you get a lot of guitar for your money, or a lot of bass for the money, and I think there's a lot to be said for that model of trying to sort of cut out. Um, you know, as many people between where the guitar's made and eventually getting it into the hands of the customer. 
Um, but well, talk, it, talking of money, how much are they? Andy? What sort of? Well, yeah, money-wise, it's six ninety-nine for the four string, seven ninety-nine for the five. Um, so you know, I mean, you got to remember that the, the 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 factory that's building these, or at least the country that they're from, is probably. In terms of quality, typically speaking, you're going to get, you know, sort of USA and Japan kind of vying it out for sort of top spot. Mm -hmm. Then you get Korea, which is where these guys are from, sort of vying it out for kind of second spot. And then, you know, you've got your Indonesia, China, Malaysia, India, all kinds of other places making guitars that, that are all still typically at the more value end. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, think if, if you just take Reverend and you compare it to other brands that maybe do have a more typical route to market, you know, so you know, manufacturer, distributor, retailer, customer, you'd probably saving a couple of hundred quid maybe on a, you know, by cutting out one of those middlemen. Sure. Uh, so it's cool. I like it. I mean, the, the other thing that it wasn't just a price thing that really appealed to me with Reverend. It, it was the fact that it, you know, they were going for this much more sort of retro funky kind of look. It wasn't you know, it wasn't just another P bass ripoff or a strap ripoff or something like that. It's the know? thing that really appeals to me. It's it's just a really different. Mm. I've not seen anything else like this. Have you? It's 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 got sort of shades of of like a a Jaguar bass or a Jazzmaster bass or something, but but with a sort of a more extreme yeah. vibe. Um, I like it. You know, it's got a unique sort of uh, style. Yeah, no, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. And they go for those kind of more. Uh, they. they, they they don't tend to do the sort of the safe colours, you know. I say that, he says, holding a black guitar is pretty safe. Um, but you know, they'll, they'll go for some slightly more unusual colours. Yeah. So let's, um, let's fire over to the Dub King. This is, uh, this is intriguing, I love the look of this one. This is super cool, um, and you know, relatively uh, unusual in that I wouldn't have said that, you know, not every bass maker goes for this kind of semi-acoustic, um, or semi-hollow rather, vibe same pickups as you've got on the Macaulay, um but now with a bound neck the, the sort of the more you know gibsony kind of um, block inlays uh, same kind of cast bridge same hip shot tuners so it's, it's very much actually to be honest with you, in terms of hardware it's it's very similar to the Macaulay. it's just a different body um, I'll just tune this one up because I haven't actually plugged it in yet. So well, let's see what it sounds like. That's how it's, uh, it's debut. <laughs> Expect, um, Way more a semi acoustic to yeah. be, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Much more of that uh, mm. offnery. Uh, mm. It's almost got a flat wound string kind of. I mean, I know they're, they're not, they're round wound strings on there, but it's almost got that kind of flat wound thuddiness to it. Yeah, pretty cool. Is that the tone all the way up? Yeah. That's, that's, it's pretty... Um, I'll roll I'll, it off. Yeah. You'd have to be a little bit careful probably with this, wouldn't you? And that you wouldn't necessarily want this for a band where you really needed to kind of cut through. So I would have thought that the, the, the less busy the band is, the more appropriate kind of that sort of tone will... Yeah, I guess so. Yes, it's not going to appeal to everybody, obviously. Um, but uh, my word, what a look at that. It's a great just, looking bass, isn't it? It's fantastic. It almost looks like one of those, um, when they do the acoustic, like the thin line acoustic guitar bodies, don't they? It's sort of got that kind of... Taylor T5 kind of vibe to it. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I like it. And again, different colours. Uh, let's just say, so how honky can you get it on the bridge pickup? Okay, back to the bridge. That was the tone control. I know what I'm doing. I'm testing you. Back to the bridge. Pretty honky, isn't it? Yeah. So you can get the honk there, but it still hasn't got real. It hasn't got any zing, has it? it hasn't got like a. It hasn't got. A, it's not a bright sounding bass. No, no, not at um, all. But you wouldn't expect it to be really. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's funny that, isn't it? How um, you know the debate rages on about how different you know woods and designs and stuff affect things. But that was I was that was much more dramatic than I expected it to be. You know, given that it's you know same bridge, same tuners, same pickups as on the um, 
Makali well, four strings. How's it going to show you what the difference? You know? I don't know. Is there is there a scale length difference there between feels, these two? It feels shorter. Can we just can we just find that out? I vaguely remember these being thirty four inch scale length. Um, oh yeah, it looks oh, much shorter. Hugely different much scale shorter, length. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to find out that for sure. I mean, that's got to be a big contributing factor into the tone is the fact that the strings are obviously there's far less tension in the string to get them to pitch mm. on um, on the short scale one. Yeah. Uh, let's have a little look. Here we go. Wow, 30 inch scale length. That's that is basically proper short scale, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it sounds great though. I love I love the sound of it. Now, Do you think it's sort of appropriate for sort of techno pop, or would you, would you say probably not? <laughs> I'd probably I'd probably pick a different bass if I was going to techno pop. I'm surprised. You know, Let, let's see if I can find. Not I like that a one. challenge though. Let's not do that one. Plutonic, that's only got war dance now, that's sword dancing. Do you know what key we're in? C, uh, uh, C. Is it? Yeah. Do we need to tune? No. Okay. I'm going in, ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> 